Recently, a widespread discussion has been triggered on a story about a doctorate in physics from Peking University, who won the competition for a job position named Urban Management and Law Enforcement Officer in a grassroots street of Beijing. At the time when fresh graduates are all out looking for jobs, the issue of the serious shrinking job market for young people and the waste of well-educated talents has been brought up yet again. According to a report released by China's Ministry of Education, there are an estimated 10.76 million fresh college graduates in 2022 in China, an increase of 1.67 million year on year. It is said that an additional 800,000 international students are planning to return to China to work. A record number of graduates and a record increase in the number of graduates are making the already difficult employment situation even more severe. According to data released by China's National Bureau of Statistics, the surveyed unemployment rate for urban youth aged 16 to 24 rose from 15.3 percent in January and February to 16 percent in March. The highest in the past five years for the same period. 16 to 24 years, 25 to 59 years of age group survey rate fell from 16 to 25. No official data is available on the unemployment rate for college graduates aged 20 to 24 and above. It only says that it fell by 0.7 percent from a year earlier, but the unemployment rate for this age group has been around 20 percent for several years. In addition, the urban survey unemployment rate rose to 5.8 percent in March, the highest since June of 2020, and breaking the Communist Party's target limit of an unemployment rate below 5.5 percent. It remains unknown how credible the statistics are in China's unemployment rate, but Fu Linghui, director of the General Department of China's National Bureau of Statistics, has to admit that the unemployment rate of university students is at a high level. New graduates will soon be leaving school, and they usually have several paths in front of them, such as taking the civil service or public institution exams, taking postgraduate or doctoral exams, and entering the job market. This year, the number of graduates is huge, more than 10 million, which caused the traffic jam on the roads to take the civil service, public institution, or graduate school exams. The Daily Economic News reported that, according to the 2022 Autumn Recruitment Quotes for College Graduates released by 51job.com, China's largest recruitment website, more than half of the undergraduates said they intend to enter graduate school, and nearly 30% of graduate students will consider pursuing a doctoral degree. The number of people who will pursue further studies after graduation is on the rise. This is also the choice of Chinese graduates who have no other choice. In 2022, 4.57 million took graduate entrance exams nationwide, an increase of 800,000 compared to 2021. But the enrollment plan is only 1.1 million, which means that nearly three fourths of all candidates failed. In addition to the graduate school, the even hotter choice is civil service or public institution. In 2022, a total of 2.12 million people passed the exam qualification review. Exceeding two million for the first time. However, the actual number of people hired was only thirty-one thousand two hundred, and the ratio of applications to admission was as high as sixty-eight to one, a record. For the most popular position, the admission ratio is close to one out of twenty thousand. To add insult to injury, China's economic situation is still deteriorating, and there are waves of layoffs. Since February. Internet companies with a high concentration of young people have reported the fiercest wave of layoffs in their history. Alibaba, Tencent, Jingdong, and other e-commerce giants have been on the top search list one after another because of their massive layoffs. For example, Alibaba's research and development institution, Dharma Institute, is said to be laying off 30% of its staff in the near future. Employees of the social platform Little Red Book. Broke the news that the company had recently laid off 20% of its staff, affecting all departments, with more graduates and probationary employees being laid off. However, internet and companies are not the only ones laying off employees. Under the Chinese Communist Party's strict policy on many industries, the education and training industry and the real estate industry have been hit hard and have also started a layoff spree long ago.
Against the backdrop of economic downturn and record high unemployment rates, the official media of the CCP is recently again propagating to encourage people to work flexibly. The official media, the China News Service, advertised that choosing flexible employment does not mean that you cannot find a job, nor is it a casual, odd job, but a new mode of employment. This media also cited the China Flexible Employment Development Report of 2022. A blue book published by the Flexible Employment Group of Renmin University of China, which shows that 61.14 percent of enterprises in China are using flexible employment in 2021, 5.46 percent more than in 2020, and enterprises tend to expand the scale of flexible employment. The official media Guangming Daily also said that flexible employment is indeed the proactive choice for most young people. However, the official media articles drew widespread criticism among the Chinese public, saying that the official media seems to be trying to rationalize flexible employment for young people who have no way to find a job, which is a way to shirk responsibility. Some people even suspect that the official media is encouraging young people to enter the field of flexible employment, such as online taxi and delivery. The Chinese government's response to the crisis has been to make sure that the economy is in the midst of a recession, as reflected by the fact that China's economic growth dropped from 18.3 percent in the first quarter to 4 percent in the fourth quarter of 2021. On April 18th, China National Bureau of Statistics data showed that GDP grew 4.8 percent year on year in the first quarter of this year, up 1.3 percent from the fourth quarter of last year. This figure is higher than the expectations of many institutions and economists, but it is still short of the annual growth target of 5.5 percent. The CCP is forcing a zeroed COVID-19 policy as the outbreak continues across China. Shanghai has been locked down for nearly a month. A Nomura survey shows that as of April 18th, 45 cities in China, covering 373 million people, were under full or partial closure. These 45 cities accounted for about 40 percent of China's GDP. Some economists have estimated that if a megacity like Shanghai were to be closed for two weeks, the impact on China's GDP for that month would be roughly 2 percent. As the epidemic continues, the communist government has implemented an iron-fisted zero-COVID policy, causing many enterprises to shut down and foreign invested companies leaving the country. Which drastically reduced job opportunities. The flexible employment is, in fact, a desperate choice. According to a survey conducted by a Chinese manpower agency for flexible employment jobs, general labor accounts for 45 percent in 2021. Others, including frontline workers, construction workers, service workers, cleaners, security guards, maids, property managers, and more, these jobs do not require high qualifications. But are also unattractive to university graduates. Of course, some graduates are still lucky enough to get into the civil service. A few days ago, the Chaoyang District of Beijing announced two batches of civil servants to be hired this year, which may reflect, to some extent, the fierce competition for the current civil service examination, and laterally reflect the job market situation. There are 208 people on the list. The majority of these positions are rural street grassroots positions, positions such as city management and party work positions, most of which require a bachelor's degree. But more than 60% of the people on the public list holds a master's degree or even a doctorate. According to China Fund News, among the list announced by Chaoyang District, Chao Wai Street plans to hire two city management team members, both with master's degrees. One from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences University, and the other from the Diplomatic Academy, where the Chinese Communist Party trains diplomats. The city management supervision position in Cuijiazhuang District attracts a master's degree from Manchester University in the UK. The more impressive one is the Jiuxian Chao Street, the recruitment of city management enforcement position, hired a doctorate from Peking University. 
Her specialty is particle physics and atomic nuclear physics. The report said that from the recruitment requirements, these are basically rural street grassroots positions. For example, the city management team of Chao Wai Street is responsible for the administrative law enforcement work within the city management duties. And the academic requirements are bachelor's degree and above, while the professional requirements are relatively broad. Urban management officers having a master's or doctorate degree has never even been seen before. Netizens have started to complain. Doctors are starting to grab the rice bowls from undergraduates. Doctors from Peking University to keep order on the streets is such a waste of talent. Generally, the employment direction of PhD is research institutions, universities, or high-tech enterprises. But due to the rapid growth of PhD graduates in recent years, jobs are tight in comparison. 61,000 PhD graduates in 2020 rapidly grew to 80,000 in 2021. Last November, a young teacher from a university in Zhejiang province left a message on the People's Daily online message board, saying that the income of young teachers in Zhejiang universities is generally low, and the monthly salary of a doctoral lecturer is less than 5,000 yuan. Even so, the competition for jobs in universities is still fierce. Therefore, PhDs taking examinations of grassroots civil servants and secondary school teachers is still considered a new path of development. Because the pay and benefits of grassroots civil servant is very generous, they are also attractive to PhDs. The main public benefit for civil servants in Beijing is the Beijing Household Registration. A Beijing registered residence is worth 540,000 yuan as estimated by the Workers' Daily 14 years ago. In terms of children's schooling and housing policies alone, having a Beijing-registered residence can lower the cost by at least 1 million yuan. There is a lot of discussion online about Beijing-registered residents worth 1 million. Years of data shows that more than a half of PhDs from Tsinghua or Peking University stay in Beijing, and this proportion has increased to 55.8% in 2021. Don't underestimate the urban management positions in township streets. In addition to receiving the Beijing registered residents, their total salary is fairly high, and the secret is hidden in the allowance benefits. According to a report by Beijing Youth Daily, Beijing civil servants receive seven types of wages and benefits, including basic wages, allowances and subsidies, bonuses, social security payments, meal subsidies, performance pay, and other wages and benefits. The total wage and benefit expenditure of 141 Beijing municipal government branches is estimated to be 21.3 billion yuan. The total expenditure on subsidies was 5.2 billion yuan, 1.1 billion yuan higher than the total expenditure on basic wages, which was 4.1 billion yuan. In Beijing, there are three government units who provide subsidies more than three times the basic salary, and the Beijing Municipal Bureau of Urban Management, Administration, and Law Enforcement is one of them. Last year, the Beijing Municipal Bureau of Urban Management spent $8.1 million on basic wages and $28.12 million on subsidies, which was 3.47 times more than basic wages, ranking first among all municipal units. In contrast, the income of employees in universities and research institutes is much lower. There is also an important employment direction for PhDs, which is to become secondary school teachers, not in the poor and remote areas, but in the first-tier big cities. On a list of new teachers in 2021 at a Shenzhen secondary school, only one of 17 people holds a master's degree. The rest are all PhDs from famous universities. There was even a Harvard University PhD taking a position from a street office in Nanshan District, Shenzhen. As the top-ranked university in China, Tsinghua University's graduates are quite competitive in the labor market. From Tsinghua's 2021 Graduate Employment Quality Report, about 70% of the employed graduates entered the national system. 23.8% went to state-owned enterprises. 30.3% entered universities research institutions, and other institutions, and 15.8% entered the party and government agencies. 
Among Tsinghua graduates with bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, the proportion of flexible employment is still as high as 12.7%, 15.3%, and 13.6%, respectively. A huge group of college graduates seeking jobs choose to work in the party and national system even if it kills them. When working in the national system becomes the best option, the productivity and innovation of the society will be weakened. This forms an undesirable cycle. The only way to break this vicious cycle is to break the authoritarian rule of the CCP and eliminate the privileges within the national system.